We are talking projectiles and this question, what launch angle will give you the maximum horizontal range? And if you think you know the answer, what happens when you include air resistance? There they are, projectiles fired at 45 degrees. The red path, no resistance, a nice symmetric parabola. Blue has resistance, a smaller range, much smaller really, and looking carefully, no symmetry. We'll get into the details, but we'll need some help. A math cheat sheet. The double angle formula. Integral of 1 over x dx is the natural logarithm, and logarithms are the inverse of exponential functions. L-N-E, right? Right. And we know how exponentials work. And finally, the product rule for differentiation. But we won't need that until part two, so skip there if you're just waiting for the answer. Boom. We want range. But we'll start by finding horizontal and vertical velocities. Constant horizontal velocity. Vertically speaking, the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared down. See it? Constant horizontal velocity. Vertically, it's a positive velocity on the way up and a negative velocity on the way down. This, my friends, is the simpler case without air resistance, and we'll tackle it as a warm-up for the more complicated case. And to outline our four-step method. Step one, find an expression for horizontal range. Done. Constant velocity. Step two, find the time it takes the projectile to reach its maximum height. A kinematic equation a constant acceleration, and at the maximum height, the final velocity is zero. Great, the time it takes to reach the maximum height. Step three, find an expression for the projectile's total hang time. Pretty simple, it's just the time it takes to go up plus the time it takes to come down, which, since we are symmetric, are the same. Meaning we are ready for step four, using the results of this and that to find the range, which gives us a chance to use the cheat sheet, the double angle formula, and a chance to remember our mission, maximizing range. Obviously, that means a big initial speed, but what about angle? That's the question, and even without calculus, we know where the sine function will reach its maximum. Or go ahead and find the maximum the other way, taking a derivative, setting it equal to zero, theta equals 45 degrees. We'll keep that result and keep these steps handy because we're going from free fall to the case of a velocity-dependent air resistance force, a force in the opposite direction of the velocity, a force that increases with faster speeds. Let's start with the simplest case of a ball dropped. The initial velocity is zero, so no air resistance at first, but as it goes faster, the air resistance increases until the ball reaches terminal velocity, zero acceleration. This term, get it? This term for terminal velocity will be key for us later on. Right now, let's think horizontally. Step one starts with the second law. Here, air resistance is the only force, and there is our first chance to put terminal velocity to work. And our second chance to check out the cheat sheet, because we'll need to integrate in order to find an expression for velocity. But what is the constant c? Well, one thing we know is that the horizontal velocity is v naught x at time equals zero. It's a bit of a natural log jam, so here's the plan. We'll say that e raised to the left side of the equation equals e raised to the right side of the equation, and reach back to our cheat sheet to rearrange the exponents, and hey, that's how we will get rid of the logs. Let's see it at work, giving us a velocity in the x direction that starts off at v naught when t equals zero, and eventually decays, approaching zero. Recall that the path with air resistance is not symmetrical. Here is an even more extreme case. The horizontal velocity all but disappears, and there is a reminder that we're not even done with step one yet. We're looking for displacement, not velocity, so let us integrate again. The exponential function, meaning that the exponent stays the same and we gain these constants, as well as a chance to evaluate for another constant, d. Hmm, displacement is zero when time equals zero, which gives us that 
for d, and this, finally, as our expression for the horizontal displacement. As promised, it is more complicated than the case without air resistance. Remember that short equation? They're different. Let us check the limits. Well, at time equals 0, this term equals 1, so x equals 0, which it has to. We made sure of that. But what about time approaching infinity? This term goes to 0, and it looks like we will reach a maximum displacement. This is closer to the real-world case of pushing or rolling any object horizontally. Newton's first law says we can plan on it just traveling forever with inertia, but experience tells us that resistance forces or friction forces will cause it to stop. Okay, but our projectile does not have infinite time. That brings us to step two, the time needed to reach the maximum height, the vertical dimension. Two forces now in Newton's second law. Another chance to substitute with terminal velocity, more algebraic housekeeping, and another turn for the natural logarithm. Finding constants, it's just fun, especially because vy equals vy naught when t equals zero, and there you go, and here we are. Again, raising e to the left side of the equation and raising e to the right side of the equation and settling on this. It's not pretty, but what does it look like? Hmm. Checking limits, we know that at t equals 0, this term equals 1. We made sure, after all, that vy would equal vy naught at time equals 0, which it does. But what happens when t goes to infinity? This term goes to 0, and vy becomes negative terminal velocity, which makes sense, terminal velocity downward, but it's not what this graph shows because this graph is only showing half of the story. On the other side, we see an object dropped with air resistance. For both graphs, the constant acceleration line is included there for reference, but note that with air resistance, our projectile will reach its max height sooner. Oh yeah, we're supposed to be finding the time it takes the projectile to reach that max height. Easy, set Vy equal to zero, and look back at our cheat sheet, the older version this time. If e to the y equals x, then y equals ln x. So there's our e to the y and our ln x. And a chance to be careful about negatives, which turn into reciprocals and an expression for the time it takes the projectile to reach its maximum height, t up. Step three is finding the total hang time, t up plus t down without air resistance symmetry, the same time going up and coming down, up and down. The weight force is always down, the resistance force is the opposite direction of the velocity. Add it up, and the acceleration is greater when the ball is going up, smaller when the ball is coming down. If this is the constant acceleration case, air resistance gives us something closer to this, a steeper slope going up, a flatter slope when coming down. And if you recall that the area under a velocity versus time graph equals displacement, then these two triangles should have, must have equal areas. Translation, t up is less than t down. It kind of floats down, which is true even though the ball will travel further horizontally while ascending than while descending. Think of the second half of the trajectory as basically just floating down. Let's get to it. This is our expression for velocity. We want time. Integrate for vertical displacement. Why? Why? Well, we'll find out later. The exponential remains. Kick out a constant. Vt becomes Vtt, and we're looking for d. Knowing that y is 0 at time 0, okay. Okay, but I'm not exactly happy about it. Let's check our limits. At time equals 0, this goes to 0, and that goes to 0. Good. At time equals infinity, this goes to 1, so that goes to some constant, and this term goes to negative infinity, which is exactly perfect. If you throw that projectile into or near an infinite pit, it will go down and down and down at terminal velocity for infinite time. Hey, look, d equals vt is back. But the projectile, again, does not travel forever. It goes up and then comes down. Let us find its maximum height with our friend t up, the time it takes to reach that maximum height. Plugging this into there, which isn't as bad as it might seem because this constant 
and that are reciprocals. And speaking of reciprocals, the negative does that to the logarithm, as we've already seen. And everyone knows that e to the ln x equals x. Done. Oh, and there's that. But the rest is just algebra. Max height brought to you by t up. Here's what it looks like. And then we come down again. The non-air resistance case is included for reference. When dropped from the same height, the object with air resistance, think about it, when dropped from the same height, the object with air resistance will take a longer time to land. And that's what we want, t down. To find it, we look at the general expression for y and ask, how much time would it take for an object to fall this distance y max? Displacement of negative y max and v y naught is zero, which explains the vt squared. The good news is that all we need to do now is to solve the bottom equation for t down. The bad news is that this requires knowing y max, which requires knowing t up, and yikes, and at this point I admit defeat. I cannot solve for t down generally, only numerically, and only with the help of an online equation solver. Since this has turned into a game of numbers, let's consider baseball. Long toss, a ball thrown at this speed and that angle with this terminal velocity. Find T down, calculator, calculator, online equation solver. Hey, look, T down really was longer than T up. Together, they give us the total hang time. Step four, the total range with our result from step one. Let us find a value with time and other constants, rounding now because this is the final step. A distance we can compare with the case where we ignored air resistance. You remember that equation, and here is the value. Aha! Air resistance really does cause you to go less far, which is something that we already knew anyway. And that wasn't even the question. What was the question again? Oh yeah, it, it was about launch angle. The question is, could a launch angle maybe a bit smaller than 45 degrees cause this ball to go further than it does at 45 degrees when air resistance is considered? And if so, what angle would maximize our range? And we have laid the groundwork. We'll answer that or try to answer that question in part two.